There is a lot that goes into stabilizers to make them not only sound good, but also feel good. And today I want to go over a few of the steps that I take to make sure that my stabilizers sound and feel the best that they can. But I wanted to show you guys how exactly I tackle the stabilizers of a keyboard. So we're going to make stabilizers that sound like this. And I just want to let everyone know too, we won't be going over how to construct stabilizers today or put them together or disassemble them. Today will be strictly about how to lube them and how to properly place them inside the PCB. So other than your stabilizers, we'll need a mix of things today. For one, we'll need 205G0 lube. This is gonna be our key component to how we lube anything that's plastic on plastic. We'll also need a brush. Now I'm using a flat brush over here, but if you want to use any other brush, that's a-okay. You don't need anyone in particular. I do find myself liking these flat brushes more. I also have just a regular vial of 205G0 over here, so you can use either or. And the next thing we need is some dielectric grease. Now the caps on these just keep breaking for me. Honestly, Loctite and whatever other companies are making these dielectric grease, every cap breaks. Please find better caps. Now the dielectric grease will strictly just be for the wire and that's where the metal meets the plastic. Now alternatively you could do a few things. For one you could use some XHT BDZ. This applies thicker and honestly you don't need as much of it compared to the dielectric grease. Supposedly this is also supposed to last longer, however I don't know that for sure. And as another option I do have a syringe of dielectric grease. Now this is where things get interesting because I honestly think to get the best tuned stab you're going to need a syringe of some sort. And the way my method kind of is, is I do a very light application of everything beforehand and then after installation I go in and retune things. And the syringes have become invaluable in that case. You can do everything with the brush or some sort of toothpick if you're careful with it. However, I urge you just to get some sort of syringe and fill it up with your looping material. So again, just to group things up over here, these will be things used just for the stabilizer wire. The 205D0 plus the brush is only meant for where the plastic meets plastic. And as an option too, you can just use a syringe of 205G0. This kind of makes things easier in the long run, which I'll explain. And to start, let's get our first piece, which is gonna be the stabilizer housing. Now this is very easy to lube this. In fact, you actually don't need too much lube. And to start, we're gonna grab our 205G0 plus our brush. And this is typically how much lube I use, which isn't a whole lot. And now we're gonna make sure that the lube is applied evenly to all four walls on the inside of our stabilizer housing. Don't be afraid to take your time with this. And again, we're creating some pretty even coats here. If you do notice like here on the top that there isn't a much lube, don't fret, you can always just go in with your brush and re-lube these parts over here. In fact, I urge you guys to not put a lot of lube on this because we're gonna do one extra step here, which in my opinion helps evenly coat the lube. Next, we're gonna insert the stem right into the housing. Obviously make sure this is the right way. And once you've ensured that it's the correct way, being the two holes face the outside of the stab over here where the wire would clip in, we're gonna get a little bit more lube. Now holding the stem like I do over here, we're gonna take one side of our brush and evenly coat some extra lube onto the stem itself. And now using the other side of the brush, I'm gonna lube the remainder of the walls of the stem. Now basically what this is doing is creating a pretty even and flush coat of lube across the stabilizer stem too. Now the reason I do it that way there is if you notice when we insert our stabilizer stem into the housing, you'll notice that the lube doesn't evenly get coated onto this. Now I know there are points of friction on this, but I just want to make sure everything's evenly coated. I've always done it this way and it's never failed me. So the next part is the stabilizer wire. Now before we get into lubing our stabilizer wires here, I do want to express how important it is to make sure that these are at least semi-straight, which is called balancing your stabilizer wires. Not everyone believes you should do so. I do think there is merit to at least making sure these are straight. If they are crooked or any sort of warped, you will notice stabilizer tick. In my opinion, if you're putting all this time and work into building a custom keyboard, spending an extra five minutes to ensure all your wires are straight isn't really a big deal. And the way that I do this method isn't too, too over the top either, so this doesn't take a whole lot of time. So usually I just grab my phone or the side of my desk, now immediately I don't see anything wrong with the stabilizer wire, in fact it looks pretty straight. Now the way I test these stabs is I just grab two fingers and press down on these two points of the stabilizer wire. And I'll grab my other hand over here and I'll tap on this side. 
and again on the other side. Now I did notice on one side there was a bit of a tap, so what I'll do now is I'll grab again with two fingers on these two points to brace it, and I'll use this finger here to bend down ever so slightly. Now, don't do this on a glass phone, guys. You don't want a broken phone. I'm just doing this because I'm lazy to grab something else. Probably use the side of your desk or just something else that's not glass and won't break. And once you're done adjusting by putting some pressure into the stab wire, there shouldn't be any ticking. And this really doesn't take long. As you guys saw, it probably took, what, a minute, 30 seconds, two minutes, tops. And in fact, you really only have to ensure the space bar. Now, I do recommend ensuring all your stabilizer wires, but this one here is usually the most important. So for our next step today, I'm going to use dielectric grease. Now, I'm going to use dielectric grease for my stabilizer wires today. I really don't like using 205G0. One of the biggest reasons why I choose to use dielectric grease over 205G0 is simply because I find that 205G0 tends to settle very, very quickly. But in the last two and a half, maybe three years I've been doing keyboards, I've just solely been using dielectric grease. I have mixed it up from time to time, but I keep coming back to dielectric grease. And you really don't need to do anything special here. I just actually dunk our stabilizer wires into this. I don't let this glob up too much or apply a lot of this on the stabilizer wire. And there's a reason for that, which I'll show you guys in a bit. So this is roughly how much we've applied here. And if you guys notice too, I don't go past the bend and there's a reason for that. And once you get one of your sides lubed, we're gonna put that into our stabilizer stem. You can go ahead and wiggle your stabilizer wire a little bit too, just to evenly coat everything and clip it into place. And we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. So we've now lubed our stabilizer wire. And now for the next part, which is putting our stabilizer onto our PCB. And this part's important. There's a few things that can go wrong during this part of the installation, and a few things that you should note depending on what style of PCB you're using. And there's a lot of variables. I'm gonna go over just a few of them right now. For example, with thinner PCBs becoming a more popular variant in keyboards, you might actually need to use some sort of washer or stabilizer riser. If you don't, the stabilizer will be left to jiggle. And I'll show you that here today as well. And the next part is installation of your screw and stabilizers. And let me show you guys that right now too. And because this is one of the thinner PCBs, I'll show you guys exactly what to look out for and how to install stabilizers properly onto your PCB. So you want to get the hooked part and put it through the bigger holes here on the PCB. And just seat them into place. Now, on some PCBs, you might need to actually hold this as you flip it around, but I find with Duroc stabilizers, it's fine just to clip in and snap them in and then you can flip them around to work on them. And here's the first important thing that you need to look out for. And that's making sure the feet insert correctly into the PCB. And it should look something like this once you have it fully installed. And here's what it shouldn't look like. And I see this quite often. So this would be a no-no, and I've seen some people install it this way where it doesn't sit correctly. And this is what you're ideally looking for. When it's clipped in properly just like this, it should just be flush against the PCB. Now the reason I'm stressing this point here so much is because if you don't do this, you'll still be left with some sort of ticking, but it won't be from the wire. It'll actually be from the plastic housing hitting the PCB itself. Next up, we're gonna grab our screws and our washers. But for the sake of demoing something on a thinner PCB, I've screwed this in all the way that I can onto the stabilizer housing itself without using a washer or any sort of riser. And you'll notice something. You'll notice there's a bit of wiggle here. And that's because the thinner PCB absolutely needs that washer to help bridge the gap that the thinner PCB is creating. And I'll do it to the other side where we install the washer and show you guys the difference. And there's absolutely no wiggle or jiggle with this side of the PCB because we've used the washer plus screw here. Now, some thinner PCBs won't even allow you to do that. You'll probably have to use some sort of stab shim or some sort of stab riser. Not the biggest deal in the world, but usually I find a good washer will just eliminate the need for that entirely. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that our stabilizers actually work. And we're gonna need a switch for that. So now that we have our switch set, I do recommend grabbing a space bar, preferably the one that you're gonna be using with your final build. Oh yeah, I am gonna add two more switches, both in the top left and top right, just so the plate doesn't bounce as we're doing our testing. And now that we have our space bar inserted here, we're just gonna tap it and make sure that we don't hear any sort of rattling. So I did in fact hear some stabilizer rattle on the right side and a little bit on the left, and this is normal. This is how I lube my stabilizers. Because we did everything with such thin coats, we're gonna need to insert a little bit more. And this is where my syringe of lube comes into play. 
And for anyone who used 205G0 on the wires, this is why I said to grab some 205G0. And for anyone who used XHTBDZ, I find this easiest to just brush in by using a thinner brush. I don't actually have this in a syringe yet because I've never really needed to syringe in more of this, but in the odd case that you do, you'll probably have to do it the manual way. And now that we've determined that we want to touch up these stabilizers, we're going to take off the plate and our switches. And the reason that I do this is just because it's easier to work without the plate on. And because I did use dielectric grease here, I am going to grab my dielectric grease syringe and I'll show you guys an up close view on how to do this. And first things first, you're going to want to raise the stem up. I use a stem holder for this. You can use whatever you want. Your fingers work just as well. And after you lift your stem up, you're going to want to insert your syringe into the stabilizer and slowly insert some lube. Now I also insert some lube on the other side where the bend is. Now this side here is a bit easier since you don't have to raise up the stem, you just simply slide in the syringe and insert some lube. And this is one of those situations where less is more, you can always go back and add more. I suggest doing this in small increments and then testing and then seeing if you like the changes you've been making. And now the next step that I do is I put a little bit of 20520 where the stabilizer clips onto the wire. And for that I use the same brush that we did earlier. And I'll demo this whole entire process again but on the other stabilizer. And it doesn't really matter which side you do first, you can do the front or the back, it doesn't really matter. And there we go, we've modified our stabilizers. Now we can test them out once again. And here's what it's going to sound like now that we've modded it, let's see if it still ticks more on the right side. And much better. Now, apply all those steps into building your entire keyboard, and you should have something that sounds like this for stabilizers. And there you guys go. That's what I'm doing usually when I'm modding stabilizers. If you guys have more questions about this entire process, leave them in the comment section down below. Hopefully this helps someone. Again, every case will sound different depending on how you obviously use your stabilizers, your switch, etc, etc, your keycaps. So many variables go into this, but this is my method on how I least loop them. And let me know what you guys thought in the comment section down below. And if you guys want more in-depth answers to your questions, you can join our Discord or you can catch me on my live stream on Twitch and I can answer those questions there. But again, hope this helped you and see ya.